everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. Today I am editing these gorgeous tulip images and I'm doing them using Photoshop and editing in two different creative ways. Let's get started. So it's the end of tulip season, but I was out in a garden and these orange colored ones were just absolutely beautiful as a field. They really weren't very pretty individually, and there wasn't a single image that I could really uh, pull together a composition. So I decided that I would capture it just kind of as a snapshot, and then also use intentional camera movement to create more of an artistic representation of the garden. So this is where I used intentional camera movement. I did a half turn with my camera as I pressed the shutter. I have several videos on this technique if you are new to it. I shot this at F22 and an ISO of 100 in order to be able to get the blur. I think my shutter speed was only about 1 30th. I did not use a filter. Now this image still needs quite a bit of work. Um, so what we're gonna do is get started on this and I'm gonna show you with just a couple changes how we can transform this into a really nice image. So the first thing that I notice is I'd like these center tulips to stand out a little bit more. So that's where I went into my image file and I found this image, which is the same scene. So often when I'm out shooting intentional camera movement, I will take what I call a static shot of the scene. Then I will do my intentional camera movement images. That way I have the elements in the scene if I need them. So in this example, I am going to take this and move it on top of this image. So I'm just gonna bring it over and I'm gonna just kind of pop it on. But what I wanna do is go ahead and lower the opacity so that I can see the image underneath. And now I am just going to line up as best as I can those two tulips. I think that's probably gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the opacity back up to 100%. I'm going to apply a mask. We are going to invert our mask, so that's Command or Control I. Okay, so at this point, we can see where um, this is back to our original image that's underneath. So now I'm going to grab a brush using the white paint and we're going to reveal what's underneath. So let's get on that layer mask and there we go so now we can come down and reveal those tulips underneath now you want to be careful because we don't want it we want it to still have that artistic element so I'm going to flip my brush to black and probably a 50% opacity and I'm still going to make this a little blurry definitely a little blurry at the top but I'm still giving that um, detail that I was looking for in these two tulips. So then you can flip back to white and if you're doing this with an image you can decide how much of your how much of the you know the focal image that you want to bring out the detail. So I'm just kind of working through this again at that 50% opacity so that it still has that soft soft glow. And I still like the shadows around those tulips but I do like that we've got that intentional movement. Okay, so that's not too bad. The next thing I wanna do is crop this image, so I'm going to go ahead and do a stamped layer. That is Command, Option, Shift, and the letter E. And from there, I now have a blank layer. I'm going to first go ahead and crop this. So I am thinking just a standard center with those fun tulips is gonna be perfect. All right, the next thing I wanna do is some cleanup. So let's grab our heel brush. Often when you do intentional camera movement, you will get blemishes. So I'm gonna just come around and clean those up. I also have something blue that was in the background. So we're just gonna clean that up. And I don't like this white space. So I think what I'm gonna do is grab the clone tool and let's make sure we're at 100%. I'm going to select the option key and I'm just going to clone that out with some more of the leaves. And 
Let's just come up here. Yeah, and I don't want the tulip, so we're just going to come in yeah, and kind of clean that up. It's all blurry and messy in that area, so we're just kind of adding leaves over top of it to get the look we want. Now that is something that I like to do where I have gaps in my camera movement. So again, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna just make my selection with the Option key right down here. It's that Target tool that will come up. See the Target tool when you press the Option key. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Just kind of filling in those gaps a little bit. Maybe a little around this area and a little in there just to give it a little more consistency and um, kind of some polish there. So it's not so distracting. Now I also see that little, little spot right here. I'm gonna make my heel brush a little smaller and I am just gonna clean that up because it was a little distracting. On your images, you can be, you know, as picky as you wanna be. I like to remove distractions and here in Photoshop, it just takes a couple minutes. So at this point, I feel really good about the way this image has come out. I could also add some additional blur. I could add some texture. You could really do anything else that you wanna do with the image. But I wanna take a minute today and show you another option. So let's go to this first image, the image that I took as my kind of standard shot of the scene. So if you have an image like that and you're like, wow, I should have done this with intentional camera movement, or maybe you're not comfortable doing that in camera. You can use tools in Photoshop to create the same look. So what I wanna to do today is see if I can get something similar, probably not exactly the same, but close. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go up to filter and we're gonna try first, let's go down to our blur gallery and let's try some motion blur first. And you can see that we can turn this knob, let me move this up, to blur the image in different directions. Now my image was blurred a little bit to the right, so I think I'm gonna keep it like that. And you can reduce the distance, you can also increase it. So I'm just gonna come back to maybe right there about 176. I'm gonna click OK. All right, so that's our first blur. Now I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm gonna go up to Filter, Blur, and I am going to do a radial blur. Now I have not edited this image, so I am doing this along with you today. We're gonna to just see how it turns out. Now for this, you have the option of Spin or Zoom, and I think Spin is gonna work the best. And um, let's actually cancel this and I'm gonna show you another trick. So we made a copy of our layer. I'm gonna um, right click on that layer and I'm gonna make this a smart object. I don't always remember to do that, but in this case, it's going to be super important. So once you make it a smart object, you will see the little box right there. That's the difference in the two layers. Okay, so now let's go back and do our filter, blur, radial blur. Now the reason for the smart filter is we can make adjustments if we don't like what it's done to our image. Okay, so I'm gonna go about 30, 34%, and we're gonna just do good quality and click OK. And we'll see what the magic does. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have a preview. I wish it did. Okay, so that's a lot of blur. So we have a couple options. We can go ahead and reduce the opacity, and that works, that's looking pretty good. Now, if you decided you wanted to reduce the blur amount, all you have to do is click that radial blur and you can change it. Now, the reason that works is because we did make it a smart filter, smart object. So that's why I wanted to take a step backwards and show you how to do that. All right, so let's take it back down to maybe 30. And now you can see we've got that kind of beautiful blur. Now, the beauty of this is we do have our um, mask option. So we have not stamped our layers. I'm going to go back to our first. Remember we did a motion blur and I'm going to go ahead on this layer and I'm going to add a mask. 
and let's flip it to black. I'm gonna grab my brush and we've got our opacity at 50%. I think that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna bring back the details in that center subject flower or flowers. Now let's click on that next blur layer. We already have a mask because we made it a smart object. And I'm just going to bring out the details again with that. Now I'm going to take the opacity up higher because our layer opacity is at 68%. And let's just go ahead and take it all the way up. And I'm just going to bring back more of that detail. Now for this image, I like that it's still a little blurred. It's still got a little bit of that artistic element. And I'm really happy with this one. Now, what we're going to do here is go ahead and do our stamped layer, command option, shift, and the letter E. And now I'm going to do some of that clone tool clean up. So I'm going to come down, grab the target. And I'm just going to kind of get rid of some of this green right there, some of that blur. Let's just add a little bit more down here. And move this target tool out of the way. Yeah, I'm going to grab and make an object selection here and just kind of fill in these dark areas. And then I still see that that little mistake on there, the little scruffiness of the tulip. I'm just going to clean that up with the heel tool just like we did on the first image. Got rid of that. And from there, for this image, I still may crop it just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Bring this over just to kind of give it that real center, center look. And there you have it. Now this image is going to look a lot more uniform because we did it here in editing. So that's going to be a lot of the difference. So you can see kind of all of our flowers um, go in one direction. Now if you'd wanted to, let me back up a second, on this layer, you could have gone in with your brush and let's say at maybe 10% or 20, you could bring back some detail if you wanted. Let's even take that opacity higher. There we go. So we could bring back some details if you prefer that look. And actually, I think I do. So sometimes it's fun to try some different things. It's giving us a really artistic um, look to the image. So you just have to play with it to get it the way you like. So here is our intentional camera movement, which has a lot of blur. Here is our static image that we started with and how we added our own interpretation of creating an intentional camera movement image. So I hope you'll play with these blur filters. Think about them next time you're out somewhere and maybe the flowers aren't as beautiful to capture but the overall scene is, and how can you make it super creative and fun? Thanks so much for watching. Please click like, subscribe. We'd love to have you as part of our YouTube community. It is free to subscribe, so feel free to click that button, and I'll see you in the next video.